Abby, the blonde one, Mary, the skinny one, and Cindy, the nerd. Where did everything come from? Where are we heading in the future? These are some questions people wonder about. Everything including the first life forms began about 13.8 billion years ago by the Big Bang, an incredibly hot dense point that experienced an incredible burst of expansion, expansion known as inflation, which the space itself expanded faster than the speed of light. While during this period, the universe will double in size at least 90 times bigger. However, the, after inflation, the growth of the universe continued, but at a slower rate. Soon, space expanded. The universe cooled down, and the matter formed. One second after the Big Bang, the universe was filled with neutrons, protons, electrons, and a center. The ingredients in Goldilocks conditions is that we will never know, and a new complexity leads to the, new, the universe, energy, and matter. About 200 million years after the Big Bang, the first stars began to light up. The formations of the stars started inside a relatively dense concentration of interstellar gas known as molecular clouds. Before these were atoms of hydrogen and helium that attracted electrons, which turned them into neutral atoms and allowed light to travel freely for the first time, since this light was no longer scattering off free electrons. At the, as the universe is expanding, the further back we look, the faster these objects are moving further away from us, which means that their light is being shifted towards the red. Their light is what we call red shifted. Red shift means that light is emitted by the first stars and galaxies as visible or as ultraviolet light, which actually gets shifted to redder wavelengths by the time we see it here and now. For very high red shifts, that visible light is generally shifted into the near and mid interfere part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The ingredients and in Goldilocks conditions include hydrogen and helium, gravity, tiny variations in density, and temperatures up to 10 million degrees Celsius. Then the new complexity is galaxy stars, galaxy clusters, and lastly superclusters. Hello, and welcome to the Big History News. Today, I have a very special guest with me. Gabby Baker, astronomer and chemist, will be informing us on the first stars and chemical elements. Hello, Gabby. Hello, Mary. So, just to get to know you a little better, when did you become the scientist you are today? Hmm, about 15 years ago. I spent seven years studying astronomy, astronomy and eight years in chemistry. Wow, that's very impressive. Could you please tell us how the first stars formed? Of course, it all began 200 years after the Big Bang occurred, when the universe became a dark and cold place. That's very interesting. So what happened after? Well, hot spots of light and energy formed and became stars over time. How fascinating. Agreed. When these stars formed, elements began appearing. Cool. What are the Goldilocks conditions for new chemical elements? The Goldilocks conditions for new chemical elements are high temperatures found in dying or aging stars. Oh, is it true that supernova's explosions produce enough heat for other elements to form? Yes, that is correct. Nice. Oh no, my other guest is waiting for her interview also. Well, thank you for letting me be here. No, thank you. Well, that's about it. Time for me to conduct my next interview. Good afternoon, and welcome back to the Big History News. Today, we have another special guest, Cindy Tran, also an astronomer and friend of scientist Gabby Baker. Well, thank you for having me here, Ms. Pineda. No, thank you. I would like to ask you some questions about Earth and the solar system. Okay, go ahead. All right, so the first question, what enabled planets to form? From all my 20 years of studying astronomy, I have learned the clouds of chemical matter that surrounded stars clump together to create solid planets. Interesting. Isn't that what scientists refer to as accretion? Yes. Next question. How did the sun form? 
The sun formed from a gigantic supernova explosion. As material drew together, gravity caused it to spin. And then what happened? The spinning caused the cloud to flatten into a flat disk. In the center of the material clustered together to form a pearl star, eventually the sun. Third and final question. What was Young Earth like? Young Earth was a place where human beings of organisms could live on. What do you mean? Well, people would have to be ducking asteroids, the radiation would make us grow up, there would be molten lava everywhere, and there would be little or no oxygen at all. I've also heard that there was a supercontinent called Pangaea that broke down into smaller continents over time. Yes, it broke apart about 175 million years ago. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for taking some of your time to be here. You're welcome. See you next time, folks, on Big History News, where your news always stays big. Life. Because of the distance of the Earth and the Sun, it provided the perfect environment for life to flourish. The Earth is also rich with water for organisms to emerge. Those new organisms use the materials and energy from the environment to survive the changes that occurs. And that's how evolution takes place. The ingredients in Goldilocks conditions are complex chemical compounds, just the right amount of energy, and liquid water. The new complexities have new organisms which have the ability to maintain and feel themselves, to adjust to changes around them, reproduce, and gain new adaptations. About 4 billion years ago, the first organisms that appeared on Earth were the single-celled life forms. Then they eventually evolved into organisms like eukaryotes, multi-celled organisms, and then fishes, amphibians, and finally they came out of the water. Then they kept evolving, like on this infograph, these organisms evolved into today's modern sea turtle. Another organism that evolved from these ancient organisms are the parakeets. Hello. All right, hey guys, this video is going to be all about collective learning. So, Jessica, what is collective learning? It's about many creatures that have the ability to learn, some that can share what they learned. Only humans can share ideas so efficiently that we can use symbolic language to store and calculate information that would otherwise disappear when individuals die. This enables us to manipulate and react to our environment like no other species on the planet. Now on to the ingredients of this threshold. So first we need some powerful brains, precise and versatile symbolic language, interaction between the individuals and the community. And a new complexity that gives us is the new species homeostasis that use collective learning to connect with each other in new ways, adapting to their environments without changing genetically. And also pass information from generation to generation, especially like the iPhones right here. Okay, so Jessica, do you have anything to add? Wait, Jessica. Oh man, collect the learning. Oh, hey there, I didn't see you over there, you know, it's just a matter of just plants over here, you know, it's a dragon fruit tree that my plants, you know, they brought over from Asia and planted. And what we have right here is, you know, some chili peppers and I don't know, mustard. Okay, so before any of that agriculture thing came to happen, they were nomads, moving from place to place, hunting and gathering. But a thousand, ten thousand years ago, humans practiced agriculture, transforming the lives but also the face of the earth. Instead of humans moving from place to place searching for food, they could settle down one place. With producing more foods, the human population grows. The development of agriculture is raising crops and animals for food. This has been fundamental to the development of civilization. Because of farming, it brought settled lifestyles, making it possible for technological development and the settlement of farm communities, which grew into towns and city-states. 
as a population's growing and demanding ever-increasing food supply, the need for agricultural advances continues to this day. Now for the agricultural threshold Goldilocks condition. The ingredients for these is increasingly dense human communities, knowledge about the environment, warmer climate after the last ice stage, increasing competition for resources, creating this new complexity of domestication of plants and animals, villages, cities, and Algamian civilizations. Alright, that's all it for today. Thanks for watching. This has been Agriculture. You never know what's going to happen. See ya. The Modern Revolution Early humans had pretty small social networks. At most, they probably met only a couple hundred people who probably all led very similar lives to their own. As people started farming, these networks got larger. People were increasingly specialized in their work and trade. Populations in cities got larger. Trade reached across longer distances, bringing together people with very different lives and way of thinking. All this led to the process of collective learning. It's not that humans necessarily got smarter, there was just more of them. And they got better at sharing information. We developed ways to communicate in the form of writing, and eventually we were able to print large quantities of what we'd written. So what were the ingredients? It included large exchange networks with fast accumulated information and led to new energy resources. The Goldilocks conditions included globalization, which promotes commercialization and accelerates innovation. Lastly, no co new complexity made a global connected human society enabled Increasing control over consumption and resources, which leads to rapid growth population. And that's the modern revolution. Breaking news, the iPhone 10 is finally here. It's true, it finally happened. This iPhone is not like any other. It has remarkable features that no other phone has ever had. Yes, what? exactly are these remarkable features though? The iPhone 10 is waterproof, fireproof, and even germ-proof. What, really? Yes, Cindy, this iPhone 10 comes with an antibacterial case. This is so amazing, I have to get one. Me too, I was also informed that this iPhone has an unbreakable screen. And I heard that it has unlimited Wi-Fi access. No way, I heard it has unlimited battery life. This is seriously the best thing that has ever happened to humanity since decades. I know, right? Statistics show that. No way! The iPhone 10 is going to be sold out in less than 10 minutes. What? But it just came out today. I must buy myself an iPhone 10. Me too. You guys want to get a ride on my flying car? Yeah, of course. <sighs> All right, let's go. And that's it, folks. Thanks for listening. Thank you for tuning in to Big History News. Welcome back to the Big History News. We just got news that certain species are going extinct. What species are you referring to? Some include the blue macaw and the black rhinos. How soon will they expect these animals to go extinct? Some predict that these animals may not survive by the end of this year. How sad is this? Hopefully we can try and save these animals. Wait, breaking news, Donald Trump has won the presidential election. Really? I wonder how life will be like in the next year.
news about Donald Trump. No, what? He's banning all Muslims from the U.S. Oh my gosh, really? Yep. Oh wow. It's really sad. Mm -hmm. Especially because I'm Muslim. You're Muslim? Yeah. Oh wow. Well, I guess it's a good thing. Why? You are being very annoying, and you know, you're just being so rude to me lately. I just can't take it. Are you Muslim too? No. You're being very racist. I can't take you. No. Alright, hey there. This video is all going to be about collective learning. So, Jessica, what is collective learning? It's about many creatures that have the ability to learn. Some can share what they learn, only humans can share ideas so efficiently that they use symbolic language to store and calculate information that would otherwise disappear. Um, what? <laughs> I said otherwise, so would otherwise disappear. Alright, well that's all it for today. Thanks for watching. This has been agriculture. You never know what's gonna happen next. Thanks. See ya. Oh wait, the gate was open. Uh, <laughs> or just walk out. Oh well, whatever. Okay. Pull it down. Oh, oh shoot, I forgot to. Uh, uh, three. Oh my god! No texting and driving! Push him up, push him up, push him up! <laughs> I told you the power was going to run out. He's like, oh. <laughs>